Hello designers, welcome back to another new video on our Figma UI Kit series. So if you're new here, I would suggest you start with the first video on the series. That'll give you a bit of a context on what we are doing here. You'll find the link for that on the card somewhere on the top. So if you have been following along with me so far, then we are pretty good to go. Today, I'm going to show you how we can create interactive dropdown fields. So let's get started. First, I'll show you a demo of the UI Kit component that we created. Then we'll see uh, what all options it has. Uh, we'll see a quick demo of it, and then we'll start building it from the scratch. So without any further ado, let's jump straight onto my screen. So as you can see, this is the interactive UI kit that we created. This is the dropdown that we'll be creating. We won't be creating it for all the options, but we'll see to create it for two and then you can just replicate it for the other options as well, right? So let's just go to the demo playground here, take a new frame. So inside this, we'll drop in the interactive dropdown. So here we have it. I'll just drop it here, align it to the center. So once I click on it, you can see there are multiple options on the right. So the first one says the number of options. So this basically allows you to choose how many options that you want on your drop down. So for example, if I choose four, now it is configured to have four options and you can give different option values here, right? So I can enter in silver, gold, diamond. So I can give in four values here and your drop down is basically set. You can open the drop down and see the values in it. So there's open and close. You can hide or disable the label on the top. So you can basically open and close it and see the different values in it. Now let's just close it, play this one. So as you can see, we can click on this, just select the option and it works seamlessly, right? So as you can see, all I had to do was just select the number of options that I wanted, given the values and I can straight away use this and I can duplicate this multiple times, right? I just have to select it and duplicate it and change the options and that will basically create a new drop down field for you. So let's see how we can create this from the scratch, right? So here we have a fresh Figma file where we just have some color styles on the right and nothing else. So it's completely empty. So first thing we'll take a frame. So I'm just going to take a frame like this and I'm going to paste an image in this, which is just a reference friends that we can use so that we know what all elements we need to create the component so that we have an image here. And then the first thing, as you can see, we need a label, then we need a selector box with a Chevron icon in it. And then we need the options that we have a list box at the bottom, right? So the first thing, as you can see, is we need a drop down label. So I'm just going to take a text and call it drop down label. And the next thing is we need a placeholder. So I'm just going to duplicate this and we're going to call this as the select value. Okay. And the next thing is we need the option. So I'm going to call this as option one. Okay. Uh, so we have everything. We also need Chevron icon. So I'm just going to copy from the icons that I have uh, handy. So you can just use any plugin to get this like Iconify or Feather icons. You can get it from anywhere. So I already have this. I'm just going to place it right here. So right now we have everything that we need for creating a simple drop down. So the first thing we're going to do is select both of these and add it to a frame or an auto layout. So for that, just right click, add auto layout or use the shortcut shift A and that will add these both into an auto layout. And on the right, we can start adding the padding to the right and the left. So I'm just going to add a 10 padding on both the sides. But before that, let's also add the stroke to it so that we have the box outside it. So for the stroke, I'm just going to add a gray that I have here. So we have applied the stroke and we are going to give it a bit of a rounded corners at four radius. We have this box around it. Let's increase the width of this one. Let's increase the width of this one to let's say 345. So I'll say 345 uh, since we're creating this for the mobile. So we already added padding to the left and the right. Let's add the padding for the top and the bottom as well. So I'll just give it the same value here, 10 on all the sides. And we want the text to remain here and the Chevron to go to the right. So for that, we are going to go to the extra settings in auto layout. And in this, we are going to change the spacing mode to let's say space between. And that way these will get separated by equal space in between. So now we have the basic component for the selector box ready. And we have this option at the bottom. So let's create the box for these options as well, the list that we have below. So same thing, I'm just going to add this into an auto layout so that we could create the options. So I'm just going to place it to the left here again and give it a stroke. So I'm just going to give it the stroke so that we can create the separator line here and increase the width of this again, the same thing, 345. So we have created that and we want only the bottom line to come for this option, right? Because we'll create uh, another auto layout where we'll give the border for the complete list. So this one, I'm just going to go to the stroke and I'm going to select the stroke per side. So once I click on this, I'm going to give it a stroke only at the bottom. So this way, this will act as a separator line, giving it only a stroke at the bottom. So we have this, just duplicate this one and place it below it. You can do a copy paste or command D to duplicate it and select both of these and now add it to an other auto layout, right? So right click, I do an auto layout, add auto layout. And for this one, I'm going to give it the border, the main border that we see here, right? So I go to stroke again and give it the neutral color of the stroke, give it rounded corners 
is at four. There we go. And uh, we are going to make this uh, clip content on so that whatever goes outside it is not visible. So the advantage of using auto layout for this list box is once you click on an option and start duplicating it, the frame automatically adjusts and you don't have to worry about the separator lines or anything overflowing out of it, right? So that is how we can create this. Let me just put it back to two options right here. And now uh, I think we have everything set. So you can see that uh, the almost the basic structure is ready. So now we'll add it into a frame and see how we can uh, create the base component for this. So for that, I'm going to select both of these and add it into a frame. So for that, I'm just going to right click and say frame selection, or you could use the shortcut option command and G. So I'll click on this. It frames it inside this. And the reason I'm doing this is I want an option that we, where we can open and close the drop down, right? So we can show a state where it's open and close. But how can we do that? For that, I'm going to place this frame inside the frame that we just created, right? So just drag this into the frame that we just created. So we have everything inside this particular frame. So once I turn on this clip content, you can see how the bottom part gets hidden and it gets shown, right? So that is the reason I framed only these two elements so that this list is hidden always inside this and we just enable it and disable it using this clip content. So I'll enable this one. And now we basically have the base component ready where you can use this to create the multiple uh, variants out of it, right? But before that, let me just turn this, flip it to the bottom. So for that, I can just right click and use the flip vertical option or just the shortcut that is shift V and now it gets flipped to the bottom. So this is the right state. We'll just remove this one and we'll make this a component. So here we have the base component ready and we'll add variants to this. So I'll click on this and add the second variant where we want the drop down to be open. So for that, I'll just simply turn off this clip content and your content is visible. Let me just increase the height of this frame. So as you can see, we have a state where the drop down is open and one where it's closed. So we need to create multiple properties for this like we saw in the UI kit. So I'll select this drop down main component here and we'll add different properties, right? So the first property we want is the number of options. So I'm going to change this to number of options. So this will be a selector where we can say we want three options on the list or five options on the list or so on, right? So this will be the number of options. And by default, I want to give it a value of two for both these drop downs. So I'm just going to select both of these drop downs and select the number of options to be two. So this will act as a drop down where we have two options. And the next thing we want is the state where it's open or closed, right? So for that, I'm going to select this again, add a new property, and this will be a variant and we're going to call it as open. And the value could be just open yes or no, right? So I'll just call the default value as yes. So for the first one, you can say that it is no. And for the second one, it gets defaulted to yes, right? So we have a very basic uh, drop down component ready. Let's take another frame right here and see how this works so far. So I'm just taking a frame going to assets. We'll drop in the local component that we created, aligning it to the center. So right now you can see we have two properties on the right. One is the number of options. We just created two so that you don't have any other option here. And this one is an open and closed toggle. So as you can see, when I enable it, it gets open. And if I turn it off, it gets closed. And now we have to create different properties for it. One is the text value for the options. And the next is two different variants for the different selected states, right? So for that first thing, I'm going to select this and I'm going to add two more properties here. So that will be a text. This will be the option one and the value for it. So option one, just give it the same thing. That is a text property. Same way, I'm just going to add two more for this. So option two, we'll give it the same thing. And another one which says option three. So now we have created the text properties. So let's see how we can utilize it in the components. So the next thing we want to do is create a new variant. So I can just click on this and duplicate it like this or just use the plus option that we see here, right? So we want one here and another one as well because we have two options. We got to show that which is the state for each option selected. So right now in this, we have a small mistake here. So once the state is open, we want to flip the arrow as well. So I'm just going to use the shortcut shift V and this turns to the top, right? So this looks good. And then we have actually duplicated two variants here. So the first variant will act as an option one is selected. And the second variant we are going to use to show that this option two is selected, right? So in the first variant, I'm just going to select this select value and we have a content option here, right? So just choose this option here and we're going to select this as option one because here we are basically showing that option one is selected. And the same thing in the second case, we're going to select this select value and go to content and say option two. So this is nothing but uh, different stages. So if the user selects option one, we are going to change the state to this one. And if the user selects option two, we'll change the state to option two. Simple, right? So now that we have all the different variants that we need, let's go ahead and add the interactions and see how this behaves. For that, I'm going to go to the prototype tab here and select the first variant here. So just the box because the user just will tap on the box here. So I'll select the box right here and link it to the next
next variant here, right? So on click instant, everything looks good. So in this case, uh, once the user clicks here, the dropdown will open. And next, uh, when the user selects the option one, we want to go to this stage where the option one is selected. So I'll just select this option one here and click this one. The settings are perfect. The same case with option two. So once the user clicks on option two, take them to option two uh, state. So this one is perfect. And once again, once the user wants to open it, they have to select this and it should open the dropdown, right? So I'm going to link this to the second state we have here. Same thing with this because the user can select multiple times. I'm linking it to the second state. So as far as I see, everything looks perfect. Uh, let's see how this is going to behave. So I'm going to go to the frame that we have on the right. Just going to play this one right away. So as you can see, we have the dropdown ready. Once I click on this, the options are shown and I can select option two. It works. I again, click select option one and it works seamlessly, right? So that is how we can create the interactions for it. But let's see what is the difference in the properties that we created. So I click on the drop down here and as you can see, I can open and close it. There is some problem here, right? I think I'll have to just delete this, add in the new component to see the option values as well. So I just drop it here. It still says there is some conflicting properties. So let's try to resolve this. So that is because uh, probably in this, we have not linked the options in the first variant. So going back to the layers here, we'll just turn on the clip content for now and select the option one. We have to link all the contents to the options that we created. So I'm going to select this, select option one, and this is going to be option two. We'll just turn this off back again, clip contents, and we have selected this option one, and this should be option two. Yeah. So I think everything is selected. There shouldn't be any conflict this time. So I'm going back to the frame that we created here. And as you can see, uh, we have two new options. So the conflict is gone. So here I can give the value. So I'm just going to give it as gold and I'll select this as silver and I can, you know, basically open this and check if the values are updated and I'll just close it. So now if I play this one, you can see that the values are updated. And if I select it, that is the one that gets selected. Perfect. So now we have the option for uh, the number of options for two. Let's see how we can add this to three and keep replicating it to the number of options that you will ever need for your design system or your UI kit. So I'm just going to duplicate all of these. Just uh, use option and bring it to the right and we'll make the adjustments here. So first First thing is we want to select all of these and make sure we are selecting the number of options as three because all the variants that we are creating here should specifically work for only option number three. So that is why we have selected all of these and changed it to option number three. Okay. And in this, we are going to basically add one more option. So I'm just going to duplicate it, select this one and make this option three, right? So I'm going to select this, make this option three and the same thing here we have to do. So I'm just going to expand this, select the option inside this, duplicate it, select the content inside it and make sure this is selected to option three. So the changes on this one is done as well. So I'll turn the clip content off. So those both are ready. And then we'll have to need one more variant here, which is basically the option three selected stage. So option one and option two is work perfect. Just select this one and change this to option three. So now I think uh, everything is set. All we have to do is just add the extra interactions because we added a new variant here. So I go back to prototype tab and option one and option two are selected. Just select the option option three and link it to this one. Before that, make sure you remove the action that it already has. So I'll just remove the interactions that were already there. We link this to option number three with on click instant. Everything looks fine. And this one should be selected and go back to the open state, which is perfect. I think everything else looks good. So let's see how this works now. So I go back to the frame that we have here, select this one and I'll change the number of options to three. So as you can see, a new option gets added here and we're going to call this as platinum. Okay. And if I open this, you can see that the options are updated. I can close this, just go to the play mode. And now I have three options. I can select anything and it just works perfectly, right? So this is perfect. And as you can see, I can just, you know, use this multiple times as well. So if I duplicate this one and for one, I can have just two options. And for the other, I can have three options and let's see how this works. So you can see that there is a bit of overlap here. How to fix that? Just go back to your components and just add add a fill for this one, right? So right now it's empty and that is why we are facing that issue. Just add a white fill to this for this one as well. Just adding a white fill and this issue should get fixed. Let's see. It's still not fixed. And that is because our layer here is not on top of this. So make sure your layer on the top is always above the layer at the bottom. So I just placed it on the top and now your issue is fixed, right? So now you don't see that issue and now I can select it. And this one, I can select the one with three options. As you can see, I'm just using the same component, but I can use it multiple number of times without, you know, duplicating all the interactive components and stuff like that. So this is a very good
good approach of creating drop downs where you can use this multiple times in your designs without having to go into your components and change stuff all the features that you need is always present at the right select the number of options select the state and give the different option values here and you're good to go so that's it for this video guys i hope you found this helpful and in our next video we're going to see how we can create an interactive radio button so that'll be our next video as always thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one